Hello YouTubers, we're back with some more working tractor action and this time we're in Nottinghamshire at the local National Vintage Tractor and Engine Club working event. It's been raining again but the event's not cancelled because it's on Sandland. The problem is the loading and unloading. Just the four wheel drives and the tractors in the field, the lorries are on the road. Whilst we're watching the unloading we have to be careful not to get run over by all these tractors arriving. The gateway gets muddier and muddier and the four wheel drives are starting to struggle. At least there are plenty of tractors about. Here's the eight for a plough we saw being unloaded at the beginning, paired up with this tandem Ford tractor combination. I've been asked in the comments a number of times to show a bit more detail of exactly how one of these tandem tractors works. So here you go, here's some bits of video. Most of the ones I've shown were manufactured by Doe's in Essex. But this one's a home-built conversion, so it's a slightly different arrangement. The gear shift appears to be partly hydraulic and partly electric solenoid. The clutch is arranged with two master cylinders on one pedal, each feeding to a slave cylinder on the front and rear tractor. And the hydraulics on the tractor are uprated with this additional linkage, which is basically a dough arrangement. And here's another interesting forward upgrade from the same stable. This roadless 115 with equal size wheels was a very impressive tractor in its working day and it still attracts a lot of attention today.
And here comes the roadless Plowmaster that we saw coupling up to its plough earlier on. Even with four wheel drive, you still need the diff lock when it's this greasy on top. The sun's out and it's time to demonstrate the old school air conditioning. In the next door field, there's quite a nice selection of smaller tractors hard at work. And in the distance, you can see the smoke plumes coming from the Klee track with the Ruston engine featured in my last video. The overnight rain has proved particularly challenging for some of the tractors. This Fordson Major has found a patch where it needs all the advantages of diff lock and three point linkage to keep moving. I have a feeling this young man needs all his weight to engage the mechanical diff lock. Here comes a Doe dual drive. We're getting a lot of furrows in one field now and it's important to have somebody in charge of what's going on. These tractors are taking instruction on exactly where they need to be. Here's an unusual and interesting tractor, a Ford 2000 with a petrol engine in it. Notice the driver just giving it a little bit of choke when he drops the plough in to keep it going.
Can somebody explain the plough on this International 434? It doesn't have a rear wheel, it's got a chain for a top link and it has a very small wheel under the front. This tractor driver seems to be suffering from what's commonly known as Marshall Spot. Marshalls have the ability to throw oil everywhere at the exhaust, in particular all over the driver's face. Gray Fergus are going well, showing off Harry Ferguson's patented draft control system and how it handles this greasy surface. The event was spread over three fields and it was quite a job to keep up with all the tractors. I used the drone as a bit of a easy way to save my legs and I still managed to miss some of them. There can't have been many of these Case 2390s imported into the UK. They were made in Racine, Wisconsin. The Americans class this as a row crop tractor it delivers about 137 horsepower at the drawbar and about 160 at the PTO. For us here in the UK, that's a pretty big tractor in its day. This Grey Ferg is pulling four furrows and reinforces the point that Harry Ferguson often made you need more furrows if you're struggling for grip, not less, because the downdraft helps you. He would, however, have not liked the amount of weight that's been added to the tractor. I'm guessing it wouldn't have gone well without it, though. I suppose Harry couldn't have been right about everything.
We're starting to run out of space to plough now and when you've got eight furrows behind it's quite a job to find a spot where you can drop it in the ground. This Ford TW is certainly smoking well. Reminds you why we put so much effort into emissions control in recent years. With all these tractors racing up and down, we get over the land very, very quickly. One field's now finished, and everybody's trying to get into the remaining little bit of the last field.
Let's take a short break from the ploughing and have a look in the next field where there's cultivating going on. We'll start off with this Massey 35. As a young lad I always remember my granddad joking you can tell a Massey driver because he's always got his hand on the hydraulic lever. It's good to see this TD6 at work with a Martin Markham cultivator made in my hometown of Stamford. Sadly the Martin Markham factory is long gone and it's now an out of town retail park. TD6 is being followed by this nice little case tractor and cultivator. I think it's probably a Model C, perhaps somebody will comment below and let me know for sure. And now we've got this nicely restored Massey 1200, one of the first articulated tractors to appear on the UK market.
Our next tractor is another grey Fergie, often referred to as a Cyclops Ferguson because of the single headlight. It's pulling a set of Ferguson X pattern disc arrows off the traditional Ferguson linkage drawbar. I spotted this tractor across the field in the far distance and I couldn't work out what it was so I had to go and investigate and it's a beautiful little Caterpillar D2 in original condition and green paint complete with a killer for cultivator and lift mechanism Back in the ploughing field they're quickly working themselves into a corner. Just two headlands for the smaller tractors to finish off. Get 
There's a bridle way down this headland and it's very important that it doesn't get ploughed up. And the very last plough pass of the day goes to this Fords and Dexter four-wheel drive. Just make sure he stops before he gets to the bridleway. And just like that, it's time to load up and head for home. I hope you've enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed filming it. I walked miles across the field and I was glad I had the drone with me to try and cut down some of the walking. And don't forget to leave us a comment, we love to read your tractor stories. We'll be back next week with another video, in the meantime don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.